Greetings once again. I'm Chunks of Earth, and here to bring you your political report from Florida for 2012. I had a special request on my last video examining proposition, or sorry, amendment number eight, that would allow taxpayer money to go to religious institutions and literally change the constitution of Florida. So now I'm going to go through the amendments that are on the ballot, um, examine them, and then offer my opinion on whether they are good for the big picture or are bad for the citizens of Florida. The first one is Florida Health Care Amendment 1. It's also known as the Florida Health Care Amendment and it's a legislatively referred constitutional amendment. The measure is to aim, the measure aims to prevent laws or rules from compelling any person or employer to purchase, obtain, or otherwise provide for health coverage. This is our Governor Blinky. and doesn't like being told what to do. Now, as a, as a caveat, I must remind people that Blinky, our governor, used to be the CEO of Columbia Healthcare, which was found to have bilked the American taxpayer, the government, the U.S. government, out of billions of dollars in Medicaid, Medicare payments. They ripped this off big time. He was forced to resign and HCA was dissolved and he was forced to pay, they were forced to pay $1.6 billion fine and he retired or resigned. He got millions of dollars for selling those stock options and, and retired. And then he spent $78 million of your money and my money to buy the governorship of Florida in 2010 with the, keep the Tea Party wave of ignorance. Um, so the first thing he did was tell people he wanted to get to work and he started firing people. He fired state employees, he fired uh, school teachers, and then he complains that the unemployment rate is too high. And he also removed the access of unemployment to the people that he fired, among others. So he was in health care, he stole from the government, he got caught, he was forced to resign, and now he's not listening to the government when it tells him that universal health care is passed, it's legal, he wants to fight it. That's what Amendment 1 is all about. He doesn't listen. He didn't listen before, he's not going to listen now. So. Um, I'm going to include the link that encompasses all these amendments. Now, this proposes to prohibit laws or rules from compelling any person or employer to purchase, obtain, or otherwise provide for health care coverage, permit a person or an employer to purchase lawful health care services directly from a health care provider, permit a health care provider to accept direct payment from a person or an employer for lawful health care services, exempt persons employers and health care providers from penalties and taxes for paying directly or accepting direct payment for lawful health care services and prohibit laws or rules from abolishing the private market for health care coverage of any lawful health care service. Now this includes him, by the way. Specifies that the amendment does not affect which health care services a health care provider is required to perform or provide, affect which health care services are permitted by law, prohibited care services, Prohibited care provided pursuant to general law relating to workers' compensation affect laws or rules in effect as of March 1st, 2010. Blah, blah, blah. So, who do you think's behind this? The insurance industry. They don't want to provide health care. They are in the business to deny health care. That's how they make profits. They contribute money to the government so they don't have to contribute to your health care. Now, says here, supporters of the proposed measure argue that the federal health care law is an abuse of federal power, in part due to the requirements that people buy health insurance. Um, the opposition states that a constitutional amendment may not ensure that citizens can opt out of the individual mandate set forth by the federal reform. They argue that the supremacy clause in the United States Constitution would override the state laws, making the proposed amendment a moot point. I say vote no on Amendment 1. Do not support it because it's just a way of allowing the insurance companies to punish you 
for getting sick. And it's another way Rick Scott will thumb his nose at the federal government because he wants to change Washington, basically meaning he doesn't want to get caught. He wants to change the rules. Okay, that's Amendment 1. No. Amendment number 2 has to do with taxes. Allows for property tax discounts for disabled veterans. The proposed measure would, al would allow for property tax discounts for disabled veterans. This bill explicitly extends the rights to ad valorem tax discounts made available in 2010 to all veterans who are residents of Florida prior to their service to all combat disabled veterans currently living in Florida, whether they were residents prior to their service or not. Um, and the text re relates veterans disabled due to combat injury homestead property tax discount proposing an amendment to section 6 of article 7 and the creation of section 32 of article 12 of the state constitution to expand the availability of the property discount on the homesteads of veterans who became disabled as a result of a combat injury to include those who are not Florida residents when they enter the military and schedule the amendment to take effect January 1st so this one looks like it's supporting veterans who might move to Florida later on to help them with their tax exemption on homestead or their homes which in Florida it was twenty five thousand dollars off the top you don't get taxed on they oh, they raise it to fifty thousand after our property values went skyrocketing during the housing bubble so now the first fifty thousand is not taxed um, so I can only assume that the way this the way this is written I assume that we're expanding the availability of this discount to veterans who became disabled and including those who were not Florida residents so that's up to you I think that if you want to sell houses and we've got all these foreclosures and and the veterans in my opinion uh, have sacrificed their time energy and limbs and mental state they should have uh, the ability to move to Florida and still be respected and not be punished because they weren't here before they went to combat so I say vote yes on amendment two that's me amendment three state budgets this is what's known as a smart cap the measure proposes replacing existing revenue limits with a new limitation based on inflation and population change any funds that exceed the revenue limits would be placed in the state's rainy day fund once the fund reaches 10 percent of the prior year's total budget the Florida State Legislature would be required to vote to either provide tax relief or reduce property taxes that's a lot of word salad um, Let's see. The ballot reads, proposed amendment to the state constitution replaces the existing state revenue limitation based on Florida personal income growth with a new state revenue limitation based on inflation and population changes. Under the amendment, state revenues as defined in the amendment collected in excess of the revenue limitation must be deposited into the budget stabilization fund until the fund reaches its maximum balance. Therefore, shall be used to support and maintenance of public schools and reducing the minimum financial effort required from school districts for participation in a state funded education finance program or if the minimum finance effort is no longer required return to the taxpayers hmm. in support the Senate president Mike Haridopoulos who I have a very low opinion of reportedly is a longtime supporter and he said that Quote, Florida's families are forced to spend their money responsibly and so should state government. Historically, government has spent more when times are good and then forced to make dramatic cuts when the economy takes a downturn. Smart cap amendment ensures the state budget doesn't grow beyond a family's ability to pay for it. Unquote. That sounds pretty good. That's a, that's a good sell. The opposition states, uh, the groups like AARP, the League of Women Voters, said that the proposed revenue cap could prevent government, ser government services from keeping up with demand. On March 2nd, 2011, League of Women Voters officially announced, announced their opposition to the bill, 
And, quote, the league has opposed this bill since it was first introduced in Florida in 2008. T-A-B-O-R has been brought up and defeated in more than 20 states. The only state to pass the bar is Colorado, said the league. I don't know. Old people and women are not happy with it. And the GOP state president is. That's up to you. I would vote against it. I'm probably going to vote against it. So that's a no on Amendment 3. So far we have yes for Amendment 1. I'm sorry, no for Amendment 1. Yes for Amendment 2. And no for Amendment 3. Amendment 4 is taxes. Again. Oh my goodness, this is long. The Florida property tax called Amendment 4. The prop proposed amendment would prohibit increases in the assessed value of homestead property if the fair market value of the property decreases, reduces the limitation on ass annual assessment increases to non-homestead property, and provides an additional homestead exemption. Specifically, non-homestead or commercial property would have their assessed assessment increases capped at 3% a year. The property tax rate would also be lowered to 10% for rental and 5% for commercial. According to reports, this will put non-homestead or commercial property owners in line with the benefit received by homestead owners. Additionally, the measure would implement an additional homestead exemption for first-time buyers equal to 50% of the median home price in the, in the county. This additional exemption, however, will be gradually reduced until it expires within five years. I vote no. Vote no on four. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Amendment five. This is a pretty important one. Let me check the time here. All right, 12 minutes. Christ. Amendment five, also known as the Florida Supreme Court Amendment, the proposed measure would modify the existing state, state Supreme Court. The amendment revises provisions relating to repeal of court rules, limits readoption of repealed court rule, and stipulates that all appointments to the Florida Supreme Court be subject to confirmation by the Senate. The proposed legislation also grants the House access to investigative files of a Judicial Qualifications Commission. The proposed measure, according to reports, is supported by the Florida Chamber of Commerce. That's all you need to know. That is all you need to know. Vote no on Amendment 5. Because the Florida Chamber of Commerce specifically is anti-environment, pro-business, anti-tax, and they, they are literally an oxymoron for the benefit of Florida. They really... They're, they're misnamed. Maybe a misnomer would be better than an oxynomer, well, oxymoron. Uh, Civil Justice Chairman Eric Eisnagel said dividing the Florida Supreme Court into two branches would speed the review of both criminal cases and civil litigation. He said this bill is intended to bring more efficiency to the high court's ability to address all types of cases. Liar. Nope. I'm voting no on five. Number six, abortion. Florida abortion amendment number six. The proposed measure would prohibit the use of public funds for abortions except as required by federal law and to save the mother's life. Additionally, the measure stipulates that the state constitution cannot be interpreted to include broader rights to abortion than those contained in the United States Constitution. Summary. The proposed amendment provides that public funds may not be expended for any abortion or for health care benefits, health benefits coverage that includes coverage of abortion. This prohibition does not apply to an expenditure required by federal law, a case in which a woman suffers from a physical disorder, physical injury, or physical illness that would place her in danger of death unless an abortion is performed, or a case of rape or, or incest. I'm going to read that again because I want to make it clear. This prohibition does not apply to an expenditure required by federal law, a case in which a woman suffers from a physical disorder, physical injury, physical illness that would place her in danger of death unless an abortion is performed, 
or a case of a case of rape or incest. It does not apply to that. So no abortion ever. If you're willing to have an abortion and you're a woman, we've lost you. We can work on the kid. You're done. We don't care about you any longer. Oh, we're pro-life. We're pro-life. Vote no on six. Eight is religion. I covered that. Nine, ten, and eleven have to do with taxes. And twelve is government administration. So I'll try to whip through them. Amendment nine. Florida property tax exemption for surviving spouses. If enacted, this amendment would authorize the legislature to totally or partially exempt surviving spouses of military veterans or first responders who died in the line of duty from paying property taxes. The measure is sponsored by Sean Harrison. Okay. Proposing an amendment to the state constitution to authorize the legislature to provide by general law ad valorem homestead property tax relief to the surviving spouse of a military veteran who died from service, connected causes while on active duty, or to the surviving spouse of a first responder who died in the line of duty. The amendment authorizes the legislature to totally exempt or partially exempt such surviving spouse's homestead property from ad valorem taxation. First responder is a law enforcement or officer, correctional officer, firefighter, emergency medical technician, or a paramedic. You know, as a water professional, I'm considered a first responder. I really am. So I'm not happy that this is I'm not included in this at all. Um, when you're when water breaks and you don't have pressure and you're looking at potential contamination, those are life-threatening issues, whether you have a fire that you can't put out or whether you've got contaminants and diseases in your water that could kill elderly children and make people severely sick. So I'm listed as a first responder because you have to get out there and you have to get back to normal. You can't wait for days or whatnot. You are there with the police, with the fire, with with the paramedics. You are there. You're part of that team. And I don't like being left out. Besides that point, I understand this bill. And I'm torn for... I've empathized with the surviving spouse, but I don't like that I'm not included in that. So I'm voting no. That needs some work. We can we can re resubmit that next election. Amendment ten, taxes. Florida tangible personal property tax exemption. If enacted, this amendment would provide an exemption from ad valorem taxes levied by local governments on tangible personal property that's value is greater than twenty five thousand or less than but less than fifty thousand. Proposing an amendment, uh, provide an exemption from ad valorem taxes levied by counties, municipalities, school districts, and other local governments on tangible personal property if the assessed value of an owner's tangible personal property is greater than 25000 but less than 50000 The new exemption, if approved by the voters, will take place on January 1, 2013. Authorize a county or municipality for the purpose of its respective levy and as provided by general law to provide tangible personal property tax exemptions by ordinance. This is in addition to other statewide tangible personal property tax exemptions provided by the Constitution in this amendment. Isn't a house tangible personal property? I vote no on this one too, because if you're condominium is worth less than $25,000 and you're living on a fixed income, you're still going to have to pay taxes for it. And right now, we are tax-free for your homestead, which is a tan tangible property. That's a property tax. If you own property up to $50,000, you don't have to pay that those taxes. And those are that's designed for people whose homestead, that means their main place of residence, their homestead, that's where they claim residence. If you're living in somewhere that's under $50,000, more than likely, you're living on a fixed income or a limited amount of resources. So vote nine, no on 10 as well. 
11. Florida senior homestead tax exemption. If enacted, this amendment would enable the state legislator, legislature to authorize counties and municipalities to offer additional tax exemptions on the homes of low income seniors. This measure of all. Okay. Proposing an amendment to the state constitution to authorize the legislature by general law and subject to conditions set forth in the general law to allow counties and municipalities to grant an additional homestead tax exemption equal to the assessed value of the homestead property. If the property is a just value less than 250000 to an owner who has maintained permanent residency on the property for not less than 25 years, who has attained the age 65, and who has a low household income as defined by general law. No. So what this one does is, as I mentioned before about the up to $50,000 designed for low income, they're saying that low income seniors should have that. Well, they, well, they want to tax low income seniors that own something less than 25000 This one, they don't want to tax them anywhere up to, to a quarter of a million dollars as long as they're 65. That's removing a great deal of revenue from the government. I those property taxes need to be paid. I vote no on 11 also. Number 12, the last one. Florida appointment process for state university system board of governors revision. This one's important to me. If enacted this amendment would replace the president of the Florida Student Association with the chair of the council of state university student body presidents as the student member of the Board of Governors of the State University System. The amendment also requires that Board of Governors create a Council of State University Student Body Presidents. The amendment of appointment of student body president to Board of Governors of the State University System. Proposing an amendment to the state constitution to replace the president of the Florida Student Association with the chair of the Council of State University Student Body presidents as the student member of the Board of Governors I don't know this thing passed 114 and nothing in the house and I don't think this is that important to to change things around. It doesn't say why we want to get rid of this the president of the Florida Student Association and replace him with a chair of the Council of the Student Body Presidents. I vote no on that one as well. Okay. The results. Shit, 23 minutes. Results are in. Vote no on every single one of the Florida constitutional amendments except for amendment two which helps disabled veterans I'm chunks of earth and so are you you gotta vote look at your ballots you can get them online search look what the look what these people are doing to you how they're trying to charge you more money so that they can give it away Comments and questions welcomed. Thank you for watching.